in the the way that. Good morning, y'all. Andrew here from Funky Feathers Homestead. Today I've got some chores to do, some little around the house stuff. And the neighbor's dogs have come to visit. Come here, puppy. Come here. Ooh, I hope they didn't go after the chickens. Oh, you look good. You look good. How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? You just ate. You don't need anything. Okay, so last night I came out, last night I came out to turn the heat lamp on for the chicks, who I guess we can probably start to refer to them as pullets and cockerels now. I think two of them are boys. Two of them are boys, I'm starting to see spur buds. Oh my gosh, the wind. We done? Not a good day for filming outside. So I came out last night, turned on the heat lamp for the chicks, and I saw a possum. Possum was trying to get in to our doghouse conversion coop. Let me see, I'm gonna show you that let me show you the area he was trying to get into. Tried to get in back through here. Was unsuccessful. So I guess my ugly little chick house is pretty solid. Although I need to bend this, I haven't tail back down. So I'm glad that that actually held up. All the effort was worth it. They're all good. Nice and healthy. So like I said, got some chores to do today. Uh, we've got a water pressure issue at the house. We're in a well that's rated f for the size of the house. But we've noticed a lot of water pressure problems recently. We run the washing machine. The kitchen sink has no water. If I'm running a garden hose outside filling up the the water buckets for the chickens, nothing in the house works, the pressure tank just depletes. So I'm gonna go through today and see if I can find a leak in the system somewhere. When we first moved down here, this spigot hadn't been used in a long time. There's actually a hose connected to it that ran to the neighbor's property. They used to use it to run the horses. And when I opened it, it shot out a nasty clog, like, yellow, orange, brown. But this is before the house line. This is pre-house line. This is like directly from the well. And as you can see, you know, the sediment likes to come in. What Tell you... Papa what you did. What did you do? Horse? What did you do with the horse? Did you feed the horse? Yum. Yum, yum? Yeah. Did you feed the horse? What did you feed him? Did you feed him some grass? Yeah, and you pet him, huh? And he tried to give you kisses. Just give you kisses. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, Lulu, what are you gonna give the chickens? What? What are you gonna give the chickens? Ew. Tomatoes. Okay. Come on, let's, let's go give him a snack. Let's go give him a snack. Oh, you're right off with it. <laughs> 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 Lulu, you did a good job. It's a good job. Thank you. Thank you. You made the chickens very happy. Thank you, baby. So I like to come out here once a week, open the handle back up, blow out all that sediment and it tends to help with the maintenance. So you might wonder why water pressure is so important that I would vlog about it on a homestead channel. Well, in the spring, we'll be planting a garden and I'd like to install a water line and set up automatic waterers, things of that nature. And if I don't have the water pressure to get it where I need it, we're not gonna have a successful garden. So now that I've cleared that line again, I'm gonna go through and do some water pressure tests and uh, start looking in the house for leaky faucets or you know, a flapper that needs to be replaced on a toilet. We'll see. Might be nothing. 
So here's the kitchen sink. This is where we seem to have the most problems. Huh. Water pressure is actually pretty good. Maybe I did just need to clear that handle. Okay, just started up some laundry. Yeah. And as you can see, that's significantly diminished. I know that doesn't seem like much of a drop off in pressure, but the house that we used to live in up in West Virginia, we could run the laundry, have two people taking showers, and only if we turned the dishwasher on or flushed the toilet did you notice a decrease in pressure, and then it was minimal. So, I don't know if there's something wrong or if it's just how the system is. But anyway, I want to go through and make sure everything we can do is done before we call in help. All right, so while I was walking through the house, I did actually find a toilet that was running. I doubt one running toilet is enough to affect the water pressure so severely, but still, it's something that needs to be addressed, and uh, I might as well do it. So, I'm going to replace the entire mechanism. It's the original flapper and fill valve kit from when this place was built, so it's been 15 years. I think that's a pretty good life for a fill valve and uh happen to have one in the kit in the garage so i'm just gonna do it might as well maybe i'll do a little tutorial on how to do it as well all right so this isn't glamorous but it is actually really easy and you don't have to have a skill set in order to do this you literally just have to understand lefty loosey righty tighty and you only really need one tool and a bucket yeah, it's really good to have a bucket to catch the extra water that's going to come out. Um, and back when I was doing this uh, professionally, having a big sponge to soak up the excess water really helped as well. I don't have that. If you've got a hand cloth, uh, that'll work. An old towel you don't mind getting kind of manky, that'll work as well. And, I mean, worst comes worse, you can use paper towels. Or I just mop up whatever mess I have left over. Hence the bucket. It catches most of it. So step one, turn off the water. This is the water valve. They all kind of look like this in one fashion or another, right? Now the water should be off, I hope. Boy, I hope that's not leaking too. Step two, slide bucket under where the fill valve comes out of the toilet. That's where most of your water is going to be coming out. Step three, flush until empty. I don't know what step we're on. Four, five. Next step, remove lid. Oh yeah. Uh, Speaking from personal experience, don't drop that. Flapper's old, fill valve is old, and it looks like the overflow drain is actually in pretty good shape. So on to the next step. So the first step is you wanna take off this, where the water line attaches. Most of the time, this is hand tight, and no, I didn't go through and loosen it to make myself look like He-Man, okay? Most of the time, you can literally just undo them by hand. All right, I'm gonna let that water drain into the bucket. See what I did there? Mm -hmm. All right, and then there is a little nut here that you have to turn. On some of the newer models of these fill valves, they actually have a wing nut, which makes it easier to take off. But in this case, I'm gonna have to go for the channel locks, I think. Okay, so now that I got it loose, I want the channel locks, and I can just take it off by hand. Super simple. Okay, so I like to work from the bottom up on these. So once I get everything loosened, before I pull the fill valve out, right, make sure I get all the water out, I get this nut loosened, and then I like to replace the water line. All right, so this water line is an old, piece of PVC water line. I mean, it's not terrible, but there are much better options that are not super expensive. 
Uh, and I am going to replace this one with a nice braided braided hose, fill, fill line, uh, supply line, I should say, yeah. This is called a supply line. All right, so we've got our little quarter inch, which again, I will use my channel locks to hopefully undo without snapping the fill valve or the water valve out of the wall, which again, I've done before. When PVC gets old, it gets brittle. Sometimes you go in there and you Hulk hand it and it just snaps right off. Anyway, here's the old supply line. And it doesn't look like the fill valve or the shutoff valve shuts off completely. So I always like to buy the extra long ones just in case. have an issue with length, like if it's a tight spot or something. And I'm glad we have compression fittings nowadays. I can't imagine what it would have been like to have to sweat these things on and off. Whew. So now we've got our supply line started. We can move on to the guts, replacing the guts of the toilet here. So this is an older style of fill valve. It's actually called a ball cock. Um, because it has a float ball and it gets cocked in order to shut it off. The way this works is that the float comes up with the water level and pushes down a little screw that then pushes on a diaphragm that shuts the water supply off. Nine times out of ten, that little diaphragm is what fails. And you can pull them apart and put a new diaphragm in, clean it out, whatever, but it's, it's kind of a waste of time and replacement parts are relatively cheap and easy to replace so why would you even bother? Um, before I went and ripped this whole thing apart, I did adjust the set screw. This right here is a set screw. You can uh, lengthen and shorten the screw on the opposite side here so it pushes down sooner. That's how you get your water level. right? If you need to save a couple dollars and you have an old um, uh, uh, and you have an older one gallon flush toilet, you can actually adjust the water level to save yourself a couple bucks. Everybody would say, you know, put styrofoam bricks or whatever in, but you can actually save yourself some time by fiddling with the set screw. Let me get my bucket back in place. Because now there's about to be more water on the floor. There we go. And this is where I would stick the sponge or the towel in to soak up the last little bit of this water so it doesn't even accidentally get on the floor. Unless I don't have any at the moment. Am I tightening? We obviously have iron rich water here. <laughs> and I'm pushing down on the top of this fill valve to keep the seal as tight as possible for as long as possible. Because once I lift it, there's no going back. There we go into the bucket, mostly. Back when I was working maintenance, I would actually do, <laughs> I used to call it a hot swap. <laughs> I could, without putting a sponge in, pull, do the Indiana Jones, pull one out and stick the other one in without losing any water, but not gonna try that today. Please don't break the handle. That's the thing about plastics, they don't rust, but over time they get really brittle. So even if you're pulling off something you think it's gently, you can still snap it. The number of times that I pulling off a flapper accidentally snapped off the little plastic lips that it's held onto. Oh man, I don't even wanna talk about it. Give myself a little more wiggle room here. There we go. We got one, the other one. I said, and then we've got the other one. There we go. All right. Sometimes the flapper can take some uh, kajiggering to get off, for sure. We want to make sure that we don't snap the mounting pins here. So, uh, 
So here's a little fill valve pack. I have never actually used this particular type before. I usually just go in and get the corky version. So they all essentially work on the same principle. I shouldn't say essentially. They all work on the same principle for sure. Uh, as you can see, the flappers are very similar. This one just has, because it's a replacement, it has a little ring so you can slide it down the overflow drain if you need to. Um, it also has the hole clips if you don't. There you go. You can see it kind of works the same on the same principle. Here's your float. It comes up as the water level rises. It pushes down a diaphragm, which stops the water flow. The other thing that you have to worry about with these replacement parts is making sure that you adjust it to the correct height. I'll show you what I mean here in just a sec. So you see this is kind of like, it's kind of small. So you're not gonna get a whole lot of water out of it no matter what you adjust. Always make sure that you have it pulled out to the appropriate height. A lot of them just have a little locking collar that you pull down and then give her a little twist and magically it extends. I will say from here there, is usually a water line marked in the back of the toilet, which you can't really see because it's rusted. All right, so you want the top of your float, you want to, you want the top of your float uh, to be at that water line. So I've got a little bit further to go. Now here's also where it can get a little wonky too. See, I don't have a whole lot of room here to work with. So I want to make sure that I don't actually jack this up into the top of the toilet either. So here's what we're going to do. And I prefer to do it this way by extending the fill valve as much as possible so I have more room to play with the adjustment on the float. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute once we get into that, all right? And the other thing is don't forget once you make your height right to put that lock back in because then next thing you know you're screwing it in and the thing is doing its own thing is uh, collapsing again. Ugh. Again, speaking from experience, I've done that a bunch of times. I don't think I was a very good maintenance guy, now that I'm thinking about it. All right, so now we're just gonna reverse press. This is what I was talking about. See, some of these new ones have a wing nut style nut on the bottom, so you won't have to use pliers. If you've got good hand strength, you'll be able to just reach in there and, and rip it off, All right? So it's the reverse process. Put this back on, hmm? Okay. Get that nice and tight. And when you're tightening, Make sure you're keeping at least one hand on the fill valve because they will turn until you have it nice and tight. So that is in there. Really good. So now that we've got the fill valve in, I need to reattach the water supply line from the shutoff switch to the fill valve. Now the reason why I go with the extra long cords is just in case it needs to reach. Um, but also, aesthetically, I know this sounds stupid, an aesthetic for your toilet valve. I like to have a nice loop, all right? And that just screws up into the bottom of that fill valve, just like that. Happy little life, happy little water line. All right, so now we're set. So now that we've got the water line reattached, it's time to tighten everything up. So again, I'm gonna hold the fill valve while I tighten that water line down, you know, just, Give it a couple of really good cranks. Oh, okay, so now this is this goes to the overflow. Nice little compression fitting here. Um, about these clips, a lot of people say they're kind of useless. Um, you want to make sure when you're doing this that you either trim this water line down or you use the clip. It's super important. And the reason why is if you have this line longer than where the, the water line is in your tank, you can actually cause a, a vacuum action. Like you can cause a suction issue and it'll keep your toilet running. And it's not a lot of water, but over time it's definitely enough and it will wear out the valve much faster. So if you're not gonna use the little clip that comes with it, which I don't always use, make sure you trim the line down so it's not sitting uh, in the water line. In this particular case, we're gonna see if I actually have enough room 
to use this water line, right? And then this water line, there's usually a very obvious spot where it connects to the fill valve. Let's connect it to the fill valve first. How about that? Ouch. Okay. All right, so that's still a little too long for my taste. The other thing about this is you also don't want to put the, when the tank lid comes on, you don't want it to push and kick out at a weird angle. So if I were to do this properly, I'd go get a pair of scissors, probably take an inch or two off of this and uh, reattach it. But in this particular instance, I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to see if I can actually... I'm going to make all of my water level adjustments and everything first, and then I'll go back and trim this up and make it work. And the next thing to put in, of course, is the flapper. You can see a little line here where you can cut to remove this loop. Oh no. I used to just pull them out. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll go get a pair of scissors just to make this nice and clean. I should have my pocket knife on me, but I don't. All right, give me a sec. I'll be right back. I gotta go get some scissors. I got me some scissors. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut here and here. Now it's nice and clean. Okay, so here we go. Put that in the drain. Clip it on. Clip it on. I'm sorry, it can't be more detailed. I don't have the good lighting. All right, so first step, figure out how this is going to mount to our, hmm. Houston, we have a bit of a problem. So this is one of those pull throughs, which is fine. I don't really have a problem with them, but this handle is not set up for it. So we might have to get a little bit creative here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this metal clip off of the old chain. I'm gonna run it through the hole on the end of the handle here. All right, so let's push this open. <laughs> Man, I really wasn't a good maintenance guy, was I? All right, let's push this open. And we'll slide it in the end of the hole here. So now, hmm, here's going to be the fun part. So this is a good lesson as to why you should buy the kits all in one. You should get the kit that goes with the flapper and comes with a handle. You shouldn't just, you know, use one that you find in your garage. <laughs> oh man, that is, uh, whew, that is something special right there. Okay, so now... I am going to turn on the water. Let's hope for the best. Oh, whoops. Might help if we had that clip facing the right way. Hmm. Yeah, you want to make sure that the water from this little capillary hose is actually going down the overflow drain there. Did you all see this? That's hilarious. Did you guys also see this one? This was great. Make it dirt, man. Oh, in our live stream? Yeah, live stream, drinking raw milk for the first time. Pretty cool. It was delicious, by the way. Am I breaking the fourth wall here? That took like three minutes to fill up. I don't know if that's good. Okay, so the water level is not perfect. We're gonna have to adjust the float valve just a touch, which is fine, that's easy enough, I think. You just push this button here, and you slide it up. I would say that's close enough. How about that? Like a quarter inch below the water line. I don't wanna fiddle with it that much. All right, let's see if she flush. All right, so this part's gonna be really boring. I usually test it three times before I put the lid back on and call it done, just to make sure. You never know when something really 
weird will happen, especially with the flapper. So I don't think you guys want to sit through all that. Well, that was three fills, and it filled and stopped appropriately. I think I am actually going to trim this tube just a little bit, because it got close a couple of times. Oh, do it this way. I also had the spray part facing the wrong direction, so that didn't help. All right, take probably an inch and a half off. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right. There we go. And voila. Fill valve is replaced. All right, y'all. That is that project done. I'm not gonna lie, those time lapses, it was two 10 minute time lapses. It took 20 minutes to fill the tank three times. So obviously that wasn't the issue with the pressure, but it's all the time I have today to work on it. I gotta get out into the garage and keep cleaning and I've got some other projects to do. So I think we're just gonna leave that little search there. And maybe it is time to call in a professional. All right, y'all. I forgot we had a meeting tonight down at the community college in Wilmington. Um, so I had to run inside and get cleaned up real quick. So I don't look like a sweaty mess when I roll in. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. I know it's kind of mundane tasks, but hey, that's part of homesteading, right? Some days you're just going to be cutting the grass and doing laundry. I'm Andrew from Funky Feathers Homestead. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Are you saying camera? You want to carry the camera? Oh gosh, this is not good. Heavy. Heavy. Heavy.